Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to part three of our six part Eldritch Moon full set review. Today we're going to look at all of the cards in black and a few multicolor cards as well. Uh, if you've been watching the series, you know we've already looked at white and blue. You can check those out on the channel. Tomorrow we'll be back with red, the following day green, and then the next day we will have all the colorless cards and hopefully get you prepared for the pre release. So today we're here to talk about the black cards, and what's interesting about this set is black is really all in on zombie and graveyard recursion this time around uh, there's very few cards you're going to find that really don't fit that mold uh, black is going to work really well with blue because blue has a lot of self mill uh, green also has a lot of mill so you'll get some value there especially with some of the green delirium cards uh, but really i think you can pair black up with any color and that color is going to get the benefit of some pretty aggressive token strategies <laughs> i also think that we're going to see a standard zombie deck i think the pieces are there for that so having said that uh, let's jump in and look at the cards the first one is boon of emmercool and this is a good limited card but you want to use it in the right way if you're trying to use this to buff one of maybe your creatures with invasion and lowering its toughness i don't really like it in that regard just because it's just too easy to get two for one at that point uh, you might get a little damage across if you're lucky but if your opponent has removal or some combat trick or something you're just losing that advantage However, if you're using this as a removal spell to get rid of one of your opponent's creatures that has toughness three or less, this is actually a very good card. So uh, very limited playable for sure. Borrowed Malevolence. Uh, here's the first Escalate card of the day. And this is a good limited card. It's cheap. It's an instant. It's a nice little combat trick. Uh, your creature either gets plus one, plus one, and or another creature gets minus one, minus one. It's kind of like a mini Zealous Persecution in a way. And even though it's a very small effect, it's also very cheap. And on many occasions, you'll be able to take out one of your opponent's creatures by surprise with this. Uh, because the effect's so small, I do think it's going to be more of a limited card than anything, but still good for you there. Cemetery Recruitment. So this is interesting. It's a very cheap way to get a card back from your graveyard. And if it happens to be a zombie card, then it can trips. That's pretty good, even at sorcery speeds. So again, I think this is maybe more of a limited card than anything, but I think it's a pretty good one. Not quite as good as Macabre Waltz, perhaps. That was a very good card from Shadows Over Innistrad. But if you don't have any of those in your pool, or maybe you have one Waltz, this complements it very well. Next we have Certain Death. And this one I'm not so high on. It's removal, and removal is good and limited. However, this feels like the removal spell you kind of have to play if you don't get any of the good ones. <laughs> so, not to say you're never going to play it. Sometimes you just need one, especially in sealed, and you throw it in there. Uh, but I really don't like paying six at sorcery speed to destroy a creature. Uh, okay, yeah, I drain a couple of life, but in all honesty, I'd rather just have this cost five and not drain the life. Uh, or at least give it to me at instant speed and have it cost six, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, like I said, you'll play it begrudgingly if you have to, uh, but there's just so many good removal spells in this set that this is not going to feel really good. Collective Brutality. Uh, here's an interesting Escalate card. I think the power level of this one's a little higher than the previous one we saw. I do think this one's standard playable, and it's going to be great for you in Limited. But what makes this so good is the second mode. I think more than anything, the minus two, minus two is actually very good in this environment. Now, there are a lot of three toughness creatures right now in Standard, so I think this might actually get better post-rotation. Uh, but it's still very good in the fact that you can use this as a discard outlet, which you can garner a lot of advantage out of in this set and then get a second mode that first mode's also pretty interesting if nothing else you'll get to look at your opponent's hand and see what's going on you might be able to strip an instant or sorcery out of it uh, that's not nothing i mean obviously that's this card's not going to replace thought seas or or duress or something like that in a lot of formats that are the bigger formats uh, but i see this as being extremely standard playable for sure Crypt Breaker. Uh, this is a good zombie. Only costs one, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Okay, that's fine. But pay two, discard a card, and you get a token. And then you also have the ability to start tapping on tab zombies to draw cards. That's actually kind of awesome. So uh, this was the card for me when it was previewed that kind of got me from, hey, this zombie deck seems cool, to... Wow, this zombie deck actually seems playable and standard. Uh, there's a lot of great pieces to the deck out there. This is one of them. So yeah, I think this will see standard play. Uh, this is going to be 
very good for you in limited if you're on the zombie plan if you're not obviously it's not that exciting but if you're on the plan or you just need a discard outlet it's not a bad discard outlet either and uh yeah i think this is going to see some playing commander i think there's gonna be some crazy commander zombie decks out there too and a little bit later on we'll look at a possible commander dark salvation uh this card actually is pretty cool because if you're on the zombie plan it's nice removal and you're able to give yourself potentially some more zombies but even if you're not on that plan and your opponent is you can target them you don't have to pay the x to give them any zombies and you can still minus one minus one one of their creatures so this is actually kind of cool so don't forget it's in your sideboard even if you're not playing zombies if you come up against a zombie matchup it's definitely worth siding it in i also think it's potentially standard playable because it is cheap enough it's a nice mana sink if the game goes long and you can get a fair amount of value out of this card dusk fester now this one is more of a limited card not a super exciting limited card it's not horrible though because it does have evasion so i don't want to pay seven for this uh for four or five flyer but I don't know, spending five is okay, I guess. <laughs> so if I feel confident that I can get some Delirium going, uh, maybe I'm playing a Golgari deck or something with Vampires, that would be cool. One thing I felt like Vampires in general, I felt were close to being a standard archetype, perhaps. They had some good cards in the last set. I was really hoping for some more really good Vampires in this set, and I didn't really see that. I think we needed some more low-curve Vampires. Uh, we got a few, but I don't think really enough to push them into standard, which is kind of sad. But uh, this is okay and limited, long story short. Gavany Unhallowed. Uh, okay, this is an interesting one to me because uh, you think about these type of cards and assessing them, and it can be kind of tricky because I, I always look back at a card like Cabal Ghoul, which is from Arabian Nights. Uh, that got bigger whenever any creature died doesn't have to be your creature that's a very powerful effect it's very far reaching especially obviously in multiplayer games uh, then you look at a card like unruly mob i was never a big fan of that card i tried to use it but it just never felt like it got there for me uh, and i've played it in both innistrad limiteds <laughs> and it's a small card it's easy to get rid of and it just doesn't seem to grow fast enough um, fast forward to this card, and I feel like this is actually a little better just because it already has a nice body attached to it. Paying 2444 4, 4 Unlimited is just fine. It's a zombie, so that will matter some of the time. And okay, now when one of my creature dies, it becomes a 3-5 and then a 4-6. It starts to feel a little more impressive to me. Uh, I can see myself definitely playing this one in Limited where I was really down on Unruly Mob. Graph Harvest. Uh, Speaking of zombie matter stuff, uh, this is a great zombie matters card. It's cheap, only costs one, gives zombies you control menace, and you can start taking any creatures that maybe you self-milled into the graveyard, for example, and removing them for four and getting more zombie tokens. I think this could show up in the standard zombie deck. It's going to be great for you in limited if you're on the zombie plan, or you just need a mana sink even in the late game. All right, we're up to a meld card. So I'm going to look at this first as the individual cards and we'll talk about how they are together with the meld card uh, so let's start with graph rats graph rats it's a limited card two one for two not super exciting i don't really like playing two one for twos and limited however two drops are important and if you don't have enough good ones then a lot of times cards like this do make it into your deck so definitely playable but not exciting my night scavengers kind of feel the same way is playable but not exciting i don't like spending five for three three uh, but i do potentially get the chance to take a small creature out of my graveyard back to my hand and black really does want to do that pretty bad in this format uh, so again playable but i can see where either of these cards on their own a lot of times wouldn't make your cut now together if you thought you could meld them, you actually have a pretty good card on your hands. So if these meld, now you get a 5-6 with haste at the beginning of your combat step. It has menace, and it also gives all your creatures plus 1, plus 0, and menace, which is great if you have a lot of zombies or what have you, a lot of tokens. Uh, so together, these are really good. They're just playable enough on their own. Not great, but playable. Uh, but together, they're really good and limited. So again, I think these are limited cards. I don't always see these making my cut depending on what I have going on. I might just want to be more efficient with, say, the zombie theme if I'm in black or efficient in another theme where I'm not really trying to play cards like this. But if I'm 
have enough copies of these things and I thought maybe I can get some tokens going and maybe I can meld this. It's probably worth it. It might be a little bit of a gamble. I'm kind of a gambler sometimes in limited. <laughs> uh, I can see myself playing if maybe I had two copies of each of these, uh, playing them to try to pull it off. Uh, I don't know how successful I would be, <laughs> but it feels like it could be okay. I mean, the Chittering Host is very powerful. Haunted Dead. Uh, here's another zombie, and this one is another really good limited one. Uh, it costs four, but you're getting three, three power toughness on the board when you play it, and one, one of that is actually a white spirit token, which is interesting because this is one of the few cards in the set that is really trying to play with another archetype and it's playing a little bit with the blue or the white spirits. Uh, but at the same time, it's still doing what black does, and it's a card that you can recur from your graveyard, and it's still a discard outlet. Uh, so it has that theme that black has carried throughout this whole set, uh, but at the same time, it's one of the few cards that does something different, too. Uh, but having said that, it's a great card, a lot of value to be had here in Limited. Liliana, the last hope. Wow, here she is. So uh, a lot of people have been talking about this card. I talked about it in great length when it was previewed, uh, and I'll... I've had more time to think about it, and I think I still feel the same way about it. Um, here's the thing with Liliana. Uh, she's not super powerful, and so we'll kind of go into her downside in a moment here. Uh, but I still think she's a good card. I think she's good enough to see standard play. Uh, reminds me a lot of Nyssa. A lot of people were down on that card. It only costs three, but you just have to remember... It only costs three, and you can actually get some good advantage early game with a card like this. Uh, so let's talk about her downside first. I think the most obvious one is she doesn't do a great job of protecting herself. Uh, does she technically protect herself? Yeah, against one one toughness creature a turn. Uh, but is that really enough in an environment with a lot of two twos and three toughness creatures? Uh, probably not uh, to really be effective, right? That's her most glaring issue uh, with this card. So I think you have to look at it this way, though. Here's the upside. You look at her minus two, and she mills you for two, and then you're able to choose a creature card from your graveyard and put it back into your hand. So in a lot of ways, you're getting card draw for a creature and even a little bit of selection, depending on what's in your graveyard. That can actually be pretty powerful, and considering you're only spending three for this, there's a lot of value to be had here. So look at it this way. You're not putting Liliana down for her to stay on the board forever and get to her ultimate. That's just not going to happen and say standard, right? Uh, what you're trying to do with her is maybe taking out one of your opponent's creatures, and then if you're lucky, maybe you can use her minus two ability a couple times, and all of a sudden you start getting a little bit of card advantage, and that can be very powerful, especially if you get her out early. So. I think she can be very, very strong for what she is. I think she's very standard playable, probably in a zombie type recursion deck. Uh, she just seems to make sense there. Uh, as far as other formats go, no, I, I don't see her in modern or anything like that. And her ultimate's fantastic, which I could see definitely making it into commander where you have uh, more cards that are able to protect her and maybe some bigger plays you can make. Uh, it'd be really awesome to uh, have her in like a zombie deck and be able to just uh, have her ultimate that'd be incredible right and it's probably more going to happen in commander than anything uh in limited it's still a good card in limited for all the same reasons i think it will be good in standard uh, i think what's really awkward about this card more than anything is i think so many people when they knew liliana was coming there was just so much hype i mean wizards was like oh next monday we're going to announce her and we had a whole week to sit around and think about it and a lot of folks were expecting liliana the veil right or just something comparable to that and this isn't that so this is a smaller planeswalker and let's face it liliana the veil is is very 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 powerful it's not a card they would ever print in today's environment right uh so maybe it's a little unfair to expect something like that i think but uh yeah i still think it's a good card it's not one of the most amazing planeswalkers i've ever seen but it's still a good one. Liliana's Elite. Uh, here's a card that's a little awkward. <laughs> um, it's a zombie. It costs three for a 1-1, one, one, but granted, any other creatures in your graveyard do give it plus one plus one. Um, the only thing that's a little weird though is black is all about trying to get those creatures back out of the graveyard. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of a nombo with like almost everything in black. Not to say it's completely unplayable if you're not on the plan to recur stuff out of your graveyard, uh, but it's not really a great card with a lot of the cards we're going to see today so uh, for the most part it's probably not going to make your cut in limited 
Markov Crusader. Um, another vampire. This one's fine and limited. It's not super exciting, but I do like lifelink. So paying five for a four three lifelinker is cool. Maybe it has haste if I have a vampire in play. If so, even better, but not going to do too much outside of limited. Murder. Now, here we go. Premium. Premium removal for black. Uh, this was very powerful. It was originally printed in Magic 2013. It was really good during that whole time in standard. It's going to be really good during this whole time in standard. Another reason why black is going to be a color that is going to be effective in standard. Uh, and I think that it will be the zombie deck uh, for the most part. But yeah, this card is going to help that deck protect itself fantastic reprint uh, it's at the uncommon slot so you're going to see at least a few of these floating around in a draft it's going to be great obviously for you unlimited kind of makes some of the other removal spells look kind of sad <laughs> just because it is so very good uh, granted it is two on color that's the big weakness of this card but let's face it instant speed destroy a creature you're going to make that happen it's phenomenal News Graph Mob. I like this card in Limited, and I don't know, here's here's my thing with it. This is the uh, Intro Plaque Rare, so you know, it's just one of those cards that's going to be good in Limited. You're probably not going to see this like in Standard or anything, but uh, what's interesting is I pay 6 for a 5-5. Five five. Um, there's a little bit of variance because now any player can cast a spell to take off a counter and give me a 2-2 two two zombie token. I can also do that myself, but I kind of think that's what you want to do with this because when it's all said and done, you actually end up with 10-10 power and toughness on the board. That's actually pretty good value for 6-drop. So I think this is a really good limited card. I like it a lot, especially if you're on the zombie plan. Oath of Liliana. Here's another interesting one. Uh, first off, I love the flavor of the card. I mean, the quote's awesome, and her oath's awesome. <laughs> and the art looks really cool, too, on this card. I just love the background of the moon and the clouds and everything. I think this will be an incredible foil. So having said that, I mean, talking about the card itself, um, it's an edict effect. Edict effects are good. Uh, they're not always good because there's a lot of decks in this environment that are trying to go wide with a lot of small creatures that are hyper-aggressive and might be a little too slow to deal with those decks. This this is a card that might get better in standard post rotation so keep an eye on it on the current climate unless there's a um, ramp deck or something that shows up this might be get there as a sideboard card but i don't know about anything else at least for right now but the power level is there to perhaps see it in the future it's going to be good for you in limited again i would probably main deck this but you may find yourself siding it out if you're up against like the zombie deck or something like that right uh, now her second ability is actually very intriguing to me uh, maybe more so for commander than anything but i do find it interesting that she can help protect a planeswalker with a zombie token so in other words this card makes the liliana the last hope actually a lot better right uh, because it does put a blocker in the way when you play her uh, it also makes a lot of bad planeswalkers in the past a little bit better right it just any planeswalker that hasn't been able to defend itself if this is in play they can now defend themselves so it kind of opens up some more possibilities for certain game types like commander and even if the planeswalker could defend itself well now either it can defend itself more or you don't have to use its ability to defend itself the turn it comes in you might be able to do something else so i really like what this card does from a design point of view i think this is very cool and elegant design and i hope to see more stuff like it if nothing else Olivia's Dragoon. Uh, here's another small vampire for limited. Uh, cost two for a two two, and it's a discard outlet, which of course is very important in the vampire decks. It also like madness and sometimes delirium. Uh, it gets flying as well when you do that. So nice little bonus evasion there, and uh, that's about it. Next we have prying questions. Uh, in limited, I think this is a good little tempo card. Uh, your opponent is choosing what they're putting on top of the library, but that's okay because they're basically missing their next card draw. And that can be very powerful, especially if you are trying to pull ahead. And uh, also losing three life isn't nothing. So I think that's pretty economical for three mana. Rise from the Grave, a very good reanimation card here. This is seen print a number of times. It's been in, I think, three core sets and a bunch of supplementary products now. Uh, it never really kind of hit its stride in like standard. I don't know if it will this time. I think the biggest strike against this card is five is a little expensive for this type of effect. And then when it takes the creature back, if your opponent has removal, he just did a lot of work and spent a lot of resources. And you don't get anything out of it. Um, it's just better to have a big creature in your hand instead of this and just play that creature forthright. So 
I don't know. Uh, when you start looking at the larger formats where reanimation could be a thing, like Legacy, Modern, and Commander, there's better cards out there. So, I don't know. It's just kind of a good limited card, I think. Uh, but having said that, I think it's a very good limited card because for five, you can bring something back from any graveyard, not just your graveyard. So even if you're milling your opponent for some reason or milling yourself, either way, uh, you can get some value out of this and it's going to be a little harder to get rid of in the limited environment. Ruthless Disposal. Uh, again, another decent limited card. Now, they're asking a lot from you for removal. However, there's going to be times where this is going to be worth it. For example, uh, discarding a card sometimes can be an advantage in this set. So can sacrificing a creature. And giving two target creatures minus 13 minus 13 is a pretty big deal because you're taking out two creatures and you're also potentially taking out things that could be uh, hard to get rid of otherwise, like indestructible things. You kind of have like your Emrakul style cards, right? Stuff like that. Uh, you got some big Eldrazi's in this set. So this is good against those. Uh, so I actually really like this a lot in limited. I don't know if it's efficient enough for standard. Um, maybe if there is again, a ramp or a deck that's cheating creatures out, big creatures, it might be a good sideboard card, but I guess that remains to be seen. I mean, five is a little pricey, especially considering you still have to discard a card and sacrifice. Skurs Dag Supplicant. Uh, this is a fine limited card. I don't mind playing this because of its stats. A 2-3 three for 3 is good enough. Uh, and on top of that, I get a discard outlet if I don't have another one that's better. So it'll be just fine there. Strange Augmentation. Uh, this one I'm not a huge fan of. I mean, if you do have Delirium, giving your creature plus 3 plus 3 for 1 mana in enchantment form is really good. But it does open you up to a 2 for 1. And the fact of the matter is... This only costs one, but early in the game, you're not getting a huge advantage with a plus one, plus one aura. It just feels like it's gonna be taking up a slot in your deck that could be replaced with something much more powerful. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just don't like these enchantments that open you up for a two for one and don't give you any sort of way to replace them or anything like that. Uh, so I think this feels like a trap. I'm probably not gonna play it very often. Strom Kirk Condemned. Uh, here's actually a good vampire. We didn't see many this time around. It's been really zombie focused. Uh, but it costs two black, which is a little awkward, which means it's more like a three or four drop than a two drop probably. Uh, but you get a two, two, and when you discard a card, so another very good discard outlet, uh, vampires you control get plus one, plus one. This of course includes this card. Now you can only activate this ability once per turn, which makes it a little weaker than uh, the card in green we're going to look at uh, in a couple days that is kind of like the wild mongrel variant uh, but it's still a good card and it does pump all your vampires if you're on a vampire plan with some of the shadows over in Innistrad cards so it still could be good for you in the right build in limited succumb to temptation this card i like a lot again this is an instant for three and you get to draw two cards at the expense of two life that's very very economical i think this will definitely see standard play i mean a lot of cards like this have seen standard play in the past cards like knight's whisper which is very very powerful and uh even read the bones so i think this is pretty much a no-brainer that this is going to make it into standard and allow you to kind of dig through your deck a little bit uh it's also very good for you and limited as well Thraben Foulbloods. I kind of like this card. It's a smaller version of the Hounds we saw in Shadows Over in Estrad, which I always thought were a little too clunky. I played with them, and sometimes I got some value out of them with the Delirium, but uh, this time I feel a little better because I don't mind paying three for a three, two. It's something that on the third turn that still can have some nice board presence. And then when I do get Delirium, okay, now it becomes a 4-3 with Menace. That's actually a lot more economical. So I think this is a fairly good limited card. Tree of Perdition. This is a fun one. Now, it's a myth that you're not going to see it a whole lot. The most obvious thing with this card is its interaction with Triskaidekaphobia, right? <laughs> so if somehow, some way, you get this mythic rare and Triskaidekaphobia is a rare and limited, uh, yeah, I'm going for it, right? I'm going to put those two cards in my deck and see if I can make it happen. Uh, why not? <laughs> you're not going to see that very often, though. I do feel like there's going to be someone who's going to try to brew that in it as a constructed deck, like Triskaidekaphobia, Tree of Perdition, and I could just see, like, Humble Offering and Dark Packs making their way in that deck. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be good. Um, probably not. I just don't know if it'll be fast enough. However, Blue is showing up with a lot of control this time around, so 
who knows? Someone might be able to crack the code. If if you can do it, kudos. I think that would be an incredible deck. I'd like to see it happen, and, and I'm going to watch for it. I hope someone can figure it out. Um, but having said that, uh, this is really a fun card. I think it would be really fun in Commander as well. Um, it's actually very, very powerful in Commander. It's probably too powerful. Anytime you start off with more than 20 life, and you have something like this is just going to take your opponent down to 13 life, uh, that's a big chunk of their life total. Uh, so I feel like this has the potential of being banned in Commander sooner than later. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. But it's an interesting card. In Limited, I think it's just fine, even if you don't have Triska Decaphobia, just because it's nothing else. It's a big blocker. And if you get it out early, you can really mess with your opponent, even if you're just taking uh, a few points of life off of their life total. Vampire Cutthroats. Uh, I like these in Limited. These little Skulk Lifelink creatures actually do a lot more work than you think they will. Uh, you, even if you get across with them like three times, it's a six point life swing. It only costs you one mana. And it's a vampire, so that will matter with some other vampire tricks too. Voldaren Pariah, which transforms into Abolisher of Bloodlines. Um, it's okay in limited. I'll pay five for a three three. It's got evasion, so I'm okay with that. I mean, if I can pay the mana's cost, wonderful. Uh, not that that's going to be that much easier being three black, uh, but it's fine. If I want to try to get rid of some creatures on my opponent's side and I have the ability to sacrifice three creatures, even better. Now I got myself a six five fire, and my opponent has to sacrifice three things. Uh, that's decent. Uh, I do like it in in limited. It's better, obviously, if you're in a go wide deck like the zombie plan. Then uh, it allows you to get a better upside from flipping it than hopefully the opponent gets. Wailing Ghoul. Uh, here's a card that helps you mill yourself. Uh, most of the self mill you'll find in blue and probably in green, uh, but this is one black card that can kind of do it to itself. So kind of nice to have on hand. Weirded Vampire, another good limited card. I mean, paying four for a three, three is just fine. It's kind of par for the course. And if you can get it out a turn earlier with Madness, wonderful. Whispers of Emrakul. Now this one is a, another limited card, I think. I don't see it going beyond that. However, I do want to say, I do like the design. Target opponent discards a card at random. You don't see that much anymore nowadays <laughs> uh, because that's a very powerful effect. And if you get Delirium, this is very similar to a Hymn to Turok. And anyone who's played with Hymn to Turok knows this. That's a very powerful card. Uh, but the reason it's powerful is because you really want to play that on turn one or turn two. Uh, your opponent decides to keep their hand. They're making that decision based on the lands ratio that they have and the spells they have. Hymn to Turok just goes in early and just messes that all up. <laughs> Sometimes you hit a land and just win the game right there, basically. This card can't do that. You need to get Delirium first to get it to hit two cards, and by then it might be too late. And if you've played with him to Turok, you know it doesn't feel real good to draw one of those in the mid to late game. You really want that like in your opening hand. Um, making your opponent discard one card at random, I don't know if it's quite good enough to completely decimate their hand, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> um, I could see myself running it in limited if I'm trying to be a little more controlling, which isn't really what black's trying to do in general, uh, but maybe I'm splashing black with another archetype like blue or blue red or something. Uh, then this card may be playable, but a lot of times it'll be in your sideboard. All right, let's move on to some of the multicolor cards. We have Blood Hall Priest, and again, we have ourselves yet another decent limited card. It's another vampire. Again, it's not doing a whole lot to press the vampires into standard or anything like that, but paying four for a four four is just fine. Also has a nice madness cost for three if you can pull that off. And if you can get hellbent, you get a little bonus out of it, but I don't think that's gonna happen all that often for you, maybe in the late game. But I think the real story here is it's a pretty quick and early four four, especially for black. Black doesn't get uh, something like that very often. Grim Flare, well, here's a mythic. Now this one's interesting because a lot of folks are looking at this and they're saying, oh, okay, seems all right. But you do again have to evaluate the card based off the casting cost and two drop cards, basically bears that are two twos that have all of this upside can be very, very good cards. <laughs> uh, look at Voice of Resurgence. When that first dropped, people were kind of like, yeah, it seems good. But a lot of people don't realize how good that much upside on a two drop really can be. 
watch out for this card i don't know if it's going to be in the current meta but at least post rotation i feel like this thing is going to see some play i mean it does play well with collected company that's possibly a thing uh, but what's awesome about it is you get yourself this like two two creature over two but if you can get across with any damage you can start looking at cards off the top of your deck dumping stuff in your graveyard which either is not helpful to you or stuff you want to get into your graveyard and eventually you get to the point where you get delirium and this thing's a 4-4 trampler I think this card is going to be strong. It will see standard play at some point, like I said, maybe post rotation, but I think it will get there and it's going to be great for you in limited for sure. Those Golgari decks are all about self milling and this is going to fit right in with those limited decks. Morn Willow. It's our last card of the day. Uh, this one, again, strictly a limited card. The Delirium ability is nice, but I think the big story here is you get a 3-2 Haster for three. Uh, it's really economical. A little sad that this is a plant skeleton, not a zombie. <laughs> not really sure why that is. It feels like it should have been a zombie, but okay, it, it's still a fine limited card. And having said that, those are all the black cards. So we're about halfway through. We'll be back, like I said, tomorrow. We're going to look at all of the red cards, the next day, the green, and the last day, we'll look at all the colorless cards. So hey, until then, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. This video, like all my videos, was made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Even a donation of a dollar helps me to keep growing this community and creating better quality videos for all of you. Check out our Patreon page for exclusive giveaways and future goals for the channel. If you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, product openings, or finance videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a good day.